Now our topic is spin potential energy. Consider this spin. If you bring this mass close to the spin, what is the spin reaction? If you listen carefully, the spring is screaming out, telling you, don't do it. So what does the spring tell you? Don't do it. All right. But the spring doesn't use English language to make a communication with you. What does uh, spring use? Of course, math. Math is the language of the universe. The spring uses the math instead of uh, telling you don't do it. Uh, so can you convert this one a math equation? Yeah, of course. You should be able to convert this one a math equation. P S is equal to half K X squared. This is the equivalent statement. But you're going to say, no, I'm going to do it anyway. That's what you're going to tell. You want to say, what? I'm going to do it anyway. So how you, you're going to convert that one to a math equation? Huh. I am going to... How are you going to convert to a math equation? Well, very simple. You're going to convert to a math equation is by uh, W is equal to FD. What does that mean? You are applying force, right? You are applying force at the direction of the displacement. What is the source of the force? So gravity, right? Gravity is acting at the direction of the displacement, all right? So the, this one, this one uh, is this and this one is this and this is the main idea of today and this analogy now we're going to fully understand by solving few problem first let's start proving the p is equal to half kx squared now to prove this one i'm going to first start like this i'm going to put a spin uh, this is very happy spin right because no one is pulling it no one is pushing it so we're going to call it equilibrium at equilibrium, um, you know, uh, x is equal to 0, okay? And now, what are you going to do? You want to pull it, of course. You're just going to pull it. If you do pull it, uh, then you have to apply force. The force you apply over here is 0, and the force you apply over here is kx, right? And how long does it take to apply this force? Time t, to be more precise, t over 4, uh, because um, it's just a quarter of a period, 1 uh, t over 4. OK, good. Uh, now, if you come close to this spin, because this is a happy spin, and it tells you don't do it, OK? Don't do it. Because the last thing, and it's, it's being want to protect itself by f is equal to kx. But you say, I'm going to do it anyway. How are you going to do it anyway? By using, this is x, by using force, the, by using, um, by doing work, right, on the spring, applying force at the direction of the displacement. Right? Good. So what does that mean? That means... Uh, I want to find the average force. Average force is force 1 plus force 2 divided by 2. So force 1 is 0 plus force 2 is kx divided by 2. So average force is half kx. Now, w is equal to fx. So average force is half kx. And don't forget the x over there. So the work done on the spring. Um, OK, so the spring, uh, how much work did you have to do against the spring potential energy? OK, so they are the same. OK, so there's the proof. Now let's solve some problem. Okay, number one, let's say you have you have a compressed spring, very compressed, two centimeter, two centimeter compressed. Uh, how can I write that? Delta x is two centimeter. Let's put it that way. And this is uh, x is equal to zero. This is equilibrium. All right. 
Now let's say k is 80. All right, Newton over meter. Uh, mass is 0 0.5. Okay, all right. So what do we need to find? We need to find the velocity. Velocity where? Velocity right here. What is the velocity? By the way, velocity over here is zero. Why velocity over there is zero? Is because it's turning around point. Is just what is the turning around point of this uh, pen? Is at the max height. What is the turning around point for this this ring? Well, at that location, it cannot compress anymore, so it turn around. In order to turn around, it has to stop. So where is the other location when velocity is zero? Well, turning around point when it is uh, stress, so the velocity is also zero. We want to find the velocity right there. To find the velocity right there, we're going to say mechanical energy at location A is equal to mechanical energy at location B. Mechanical energy at location A is equal to mechanical energy at location 2. Mechanical energy at location, we're going to put all the usual suspects, G, P, E, M, G, um, what, uh, K, E, P, E, G, P, E, K, E, P, E, and so on. Z, P, E is zero, is because the height is zero. K, E is, at this location, K, E is zero, because velocity is zero. So only P, E. Okay, G, P is zero. Of course, this is on the ground. So on the ground, G, P is zero. K, E is what? Uh, K, E is maximum right here. And that's what we are trying to find. What is the potential energy due to the spring? The spring has no potential energy. This is the happy spring with that because the spring is at rest equilibrium. So uh, this is zero. So half kx squared is equal to, uh, what is it? Uh, half mv squared, right? So the half half cancel, kx squared is equal to mv squared. v squared is equal to kx squared over m. So, so v squared is equal to kx squared over m. So v squared is equal to k is 80, x is 0 0.02 squared over 0.5. So v squared is equal to 800.0004 divided by 5. So 5 goes to 160 times. Um, no. Uh, yeah. Uh, so v squared is uh, 0 0.064. So v is 0 0.25 meter per second. And that's the velocity right here. V is 0.25 meter per second. Right now, you can find the average velocity, but we're going to skip that one, uh, and we're going to solve the real problem. And the real problem is this one. Now, the problem is I'm going to give you, um, let's say, how much time? Okay, not that much. There is a spring, there is a box, right, and over here there is an incline. Okay. Now, let's say this is right here. Um, this is h, this one is h over 2. Now, look at this one, this one is the distance of the incline. This one is the distance of the incli incline. Did I say incline? This one is the distance of the incline. That's what we're trying to find, the distance of this incline. So very easy to find the distance of this incline. You're going to say mechanical energy at location 1 is equal to mechanical energy at location 2, okay? So location 2 is what? Where velocity is 0. Now zero velocity is turning around. Okay, that's it. Okay, uh, that's, the, that's the way you can find the height. So GPE plus uh, PE plus KE is equal to GPE, PE plus K. Right. Okay. Is there any GP over here? No, this is on the ground. Is there any P over here? Yes. Is there any KE over here? No. Why? Because it's not moving yet. Is there any GP over here? Over there? Yes, of course. Is there any PE? There is no spring. Is there any KE? KE is zero. Where KE is zero, uh, that's going to give you the velocity. Uh, that's, that's what's going to give you D. You're going to find the D. Okay. So potential energy is half kx squared. Now, is equal to GPE is be careful, not MGH, not MGH. This is going to be, what is H? Uh, so Katoa, so this is 30 degree, that's it. So, so sine, uh, sine, sine theta is equal to opposite, opposite is H. Uh, hypotenuse, hypotenuse is D. Okay, so H is D sine theta. 
Okay, so what is it? M G sine theta. Okay, now it's pretty simple to find that. Uh, oh, M G D sine theta. <laughs> uh, D sine theta. Okay, so K X squared is equal to uh, two M G D sine theta. Okay, so D is equal to K X squared over kx squared over our 2mg sine theta. So d is equal to a point uh, 0, 1 squared 2 times 0. 0.5 times 9.8 sine 30. Uh, and that is your d. So d is equal to 1.28 meters. So from here to here, where velocity is 0, 1.2 meters. Now, tomorrow in the cruise, I'm going to ask you to find the velocity when height is h over 2, when height is h over 2, okay? So that's the problem. Probably I'm going to ask you this one and that one, okay? All right, see you tomorrow.